Greetings all, Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions. In this video, we're going to discuss what does a DI box do and when do I need one. On the table in front of you, you can see two DI boxes. On the left, previously reviewed, you have the BSS Audio AR133, considered by many to be the industry standard for active DI boxes. And on the right, you have the Jensen Transformer equipped radial JDI direct box, considered by many one of the best passive direct boxes that money can buy. So first of all, let's look at the term DI. Where does this come from and what does it mean? The term DI box comes from the phrase direct insertion or direct injection. And it refers to the process of capturing a signal without the use of a microphone. This has many advantages. First of all, you do not pass the signal through the air, so it does not suffer from signal degradation while being transferred. You don't have background noise, you don't have external interferences within your sound that might cause you problems later or be difficult to remove if you don't want them. So that's what DI box means, direct insertion or direct injection box. Secondly, what does a DI do? A DI actually has three functions which we will look at one after another. Connector matching, impedance matching, and signal balancing. So let's begin with connector matching. Most of you who play guitar or keyboards know that your instrument outputs on what we call a jack connector. In other words, you take a typical guitar cable, which has plugs like this on the end, and you connect them to your guitar. If you try and plug your guitar directly into a PA system, you will immediately discover that these are not compatible with the XLR connectors that are commonly found on mixers as well as on the wall at your venue. So what the DI box does is it has jack connectors on one side where you plug in your guitar or keyboard and on the other side it has an XLR output. So you would plug in a normal mic cable here and run that into your wall socket or into your sound reinforcement or recording console. So that's the first thing that they do. Now the second thing that DI boxes do is impedance matching. Impedance is essentially AC resistance, resistance to the flow of electrical current. Now, I'm sure we all remember our school physics experiment where we connected a battery to a light bulb, current flowed through the circuit, and the light bulb glowed. Well, an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb is basically a resistor. It's a coil of wire in a vacuum that when electrical current passes through it, some of that current is converted into heat and eventually into light energy. When you apply the concept of resistance to an alternating current such as that found in a musical instrument, you have the concept of impedance. Now, without getting overly technical, it's important to understand that all instruments whether they be guitars or keyboards or Fender Rhodes pianos, they have what is called an output impedance. In other words, it is the electrical resistance of the circuit that is outputting the signal from the instrument. This can be either high or low. Typically, instruments such as Fender Stratocasters, Fender Jazz and Precision Basses that do not have an onboard preamp, in other words, there's no battery in the instrument, have a relatively high output impedance. If you connect this output impedance directly to a mixing console or directly to a recorder, you will typically experience high frequency loss. And this high frequency loss is due to a mismatch of the impedances. So one of the things that a DI box does is it provides a relatively high input impedance so that you do not encounter this high frequency loss. The radial uh, JDI has an input impedance of 140,000 ohms, 140 kilo ohms. The BSS AR133 has an input impedance of 1 million ohms or 1 mega ohm. 
and this will ensure correct impedance matching between your instrument and the recording or sound reinforcement system so you do not experience this high frequency loss. The third thing that a DI box does is signal balancing. The difference between an unbalanced and a balanced signal is that an unbalanced signal consists of only two legs. You have a hot and a ground. A balanced signal consists of three legs. You have a positive, a negative, and a common ground. The difference in application between the two signals is that a balanced signal can be transmitted much longer distances without the risk of outside interference or signal degradation. An unbalanced signal, such as that derived from a passive guitar or bass, can typically only be transmitted 5 meters or 15 feet before you run the risk of outside interference, hum, buzz, and in extreme cases, picking up local radio broadcasts from taxi companies and even the police force, which is not something you want breaking in during your gig. Balanced signals, on the other hand, can be transmitted many hundreds of meters without the risk of outside interference or signal loss. And that is why you need a direct box. It converts the high impedance unbalanced signal from your instrument into a low impedance balanced signal that can be transmitted a long distance without suffering from signal degradation. Now let's move on to the question, when do I need a direct box? The first situation already touched on is any time you need to run an unbalanced signal more than 5 meters or 15 feet, you need a direct box because you need to convert that unbalanced signal to a balanced signal in order to avoid the problems of hum and buzz. Typical setup for a DI box would look something like this. This diagram, incidentally, is contained in the excellent user guide that is supplied with the Radial JDI Direct Box. Thank you, Peter Janis and all the wonderful folks at Radial. You would take your instrument. In this case, the instrument depicted is an electric bass, but it could equally be an acoustic guitar or a keyboard. You plug that into the DI box. You then have two separate outputs. This, which is your original signal, is connected to your stage amplification in the typical manner. This, which is your balanced low impedance leg, is connected to your sound reinforcement console or indeed to your recording setup. This leg here needs to be kept short because typically it is still unbalanced. So you would need to keep this under 5 meters or 15 feet. This can be as long as is necessary. Runs of up to 600 meters are perfectly fine with no issues. Secondly, you need a DI box anytime you are dealing with what are called ground loops. Now, a ground loop manifests itself as a very, very low hum or buzz in a PA system typically at either 50 or 60 hertz, depending on the type of electricity you have in your local area. The cause of a ground loop is unequal ground references within your sound reinforcement system. Once again, the folks at Radial have provided us an excellent diagram to illustrate this. Here you have a keyboard the keyboard is connected to your mixer via a signal cable. The mixer is connected to a power point, typically at the back of the venue or on one side, and the keyboard is connected to a second power point, typically on stage or near the front of the venue. What most people don't realize is that there is actually a second path connecting the two pieces of equipment and this is the electrical system of the building itself. Now, as you can see, because of this connection, you actually have a loop of cable. Now, if the ground reference at this point is not the same as the ground reference at this point, you have a potential difference. And as we all know, any potential difference also known as a voltage difference, will cause a flow of current within 
this loop of wire and this manifests itself as a ground loop. Ground loops can be incredibly loud and they can prevent a show from taking place if they're really loud. The function of a DI box in this case is to break the ground connection between the instrument and the sound reinforcement console and this is usually done through the use of an audio transformer. Now an audio transformer as many of you will know is an iron core with two coils of wire one on either side. The key thing to understand about audio transformers is that there is no physical connection between the primary and the secondary coils of the transformer. It is what is called a magnetic bridge. Because of this, there is no longer a direct electrical connection here and thus the ground loop, which previously was continuous and thus causing a hum, is now broken and the system falls silent. The best way to deal with this issue is with a DI box containing an audio transformer. Some people attempt to lift the AC or power ground on one of these components to try and do this. This is extremely dangerous because if there is any fault with the system, any electrical fault, the ground becomes you, the operator. And this in the past has killed a number of musicians, including some rather high profile ones. So that's the second function of a DI box, to deal with ground loops. So that's our video on what does a DI box do and when do I need to use one. In a future video, I'm going to be discussing the difference between active and passive DI boxes, what the correct application is for both types and how they differ in the way that they sound and the way that they interface with your equipment. Until then, this is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.